It's healing time and you do not want to miss today's show. I am going to reveal the secret DNA of marriage, how God made it and how that can help you have a better marriage. So stay with us. I'm very excited about today's topic. I love marriage. I have done countless marriage conferences and have saved thousands of marriage as a Christian psychologist for decades. And as you work with something God created with His Spirit, He continues to reveal to you how things are made and how they work from His design, from His perspective. That's how I felt like. I felt like a marriage scientist being tutored by the creator of marriage and saying, did you see that? Do you see this? Did you watch that? I was exhausted one day. I was sitting in an airport in Canada. And I'll never forget this day. I just did a few day marriage conference and I was exhausted. I'm sitting in the airport all by myself in a very small kind of airport. And it was after the conference for a few days, and I was just tired. I'm sitting in the airport, and the Lord said to me, Doug, I want you to read Genesis chapter 2. Now, I want you to understand the context of Genesis chapter 2. I have read and preached Genesis chapter 2 so many times. I felt like I probably could have guessed at most of the content. But I really felt like the Lord said, I want you to read this and I want you to read it right now. And when he does that, I'm listening because I want to hear what he has to say. Okay, whether I even like it or not, I just want to hear what he has to say. So as I read through this chapter once again, while I was sitting in the airport, God showed up and he revealed something to me I've never, ever seen in that scripture before. And I've been teaching it ever since. It was like a download from the Holy Spirit saying, wow, did you see that, Doug? And I go, no, I didn't see that because you haven't revealed that to me yet, right? And so, you know, God's fun. And sometimes I want to encourage you, if he tells you to go read something, go read it because he wants to give you new life on something, okay? Now, I want to give you some context in Genesis chapter 1 before we get to Genesis chapter 2. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, the way the principle worked in creation went something like this. God saw it, he spoke it, and it was created instantaneously. Okay? He spoke the stars, he spoke spoke the grass, he spoke the animals, all into existence instantaneously. And that was the process. He He would see it, say it, and it was done. Then he slowed down. And he actually made man himself out of the dirt. You know, Adam was a totally different creature. He was, he was made by the hand of God. He was breathed into by the Spirit of God, which no other creature has that, the very spark of God itself inside of it like we do. Then for his final creation, this is so important because I've done so many marriage conferences, I'll ask this question. What was the final creation of God? Who knows? And people raise their hand. And universally, they have the wrong answer. Universally, they'll say, woman, Eve. I go, no, 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 no. Read your Bible. And they they look at me like, what are you talking about? We all know that Eve was the final creation. I go, no, she wasn't. She was just one other piece to the final creation. God created Adam, then he created Eve, then he created marriage. Marriage was the final creation in the garden, not Eve. Marriage, this three-person being organically living and serving and wanting to be with each other, that is what looks like the Trinity of God. Okay, so we don't want to be confused that Eve was the final. She was the 
completion of her moving towards the completed work of marriage. Now let's read. The Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now, if he was following his creative process in Genesis 1, there would have been something like Shazam. Okay, and she showed up. She would have appeared instantly. However, God wasn't finished making man. And this is so important. There is a huge difference between male and man. He made him male in his creation. He made him a man as a process. And men, you need to hear this. And ladies, if you have sons, they need to hear this message. God had to get something deep inside of him to make Adam not just a male, but a man who could eventually care for a woman. Now let's read the actual text, okay? And notice the next few verses. There's no instant Shazam and Eve shows up. Let's continue. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all of the wild animals, all of the birds of the skies, and he brought them to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the first thing God gave Adam in preparation for marriage was a job, a place to serve. A job requires that you serve others. God was creating inside of Adam a servant DNA to make him ready for God's final creation called marriage. Now I tell all the single ladies that if he doesn't have a job, he's not ready to be married. And I really wish some of them would listen to me about that. The servant heart, the servant responsibility is the secret DNA of marriage. This job of naming every animal in creation could have easily taken months or years for Adam. There were many animals to name. And you see, this is the process of God. God created Adam as a male but he took quite a bit of time every day hanging out with him to make him a man and a servant man. A man is not just here for himself. God wanted to create Adam to be a servant so that he would have the DNA for marriage. Without this DNA of servanthood, he couldn't develop the attitudes and disposition he needed to be married. When we come back, we're going to talk about the woman and what God did there. But it's really important that the very fabric of marriage is based upon the DNA of God creating Adam as a servant in the image of God. So if you're a male, God wants to make you a man through service. If you're a woman, make sure that process is done. And when we come back, we'll talk about the ladies. I strongly encourage you to get the servant marriage. Yes, this can help you have an incredible marriage and you can do this with just you and your spouse or better yet, at Healing Time, we love you to start groups, open your home and let many people that you know have a better marriage and have a servant marriage. This is what Jesus wants for marriage. So if you'll open your home, open your heart, open the book, you can start a Healing Time right where you are. To order your copy, call 800-568-9488 or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. Dr. Weiss has been teaching couples how to have life-giving marriages through counseling and conferences. In this book, he will introduce you to practical ways in which you can walk out a servant marriage in your home with your spouse. Order your servant marriage book and start healing marriages in your family, church, and community today. I am excited to get into stage two of God creating a servant marriage. Now, Adam goes through all this training to be a servant. It's now in his very heart and his DNA to serve. Now, you've got to imagine Adam waking up every day with God, bringing his little coffee to him, saying, come on, come on, son, we got a job to do, right? And God would just sit there and allow Adam to use his creative energy to, to use his creative resources, to serve with his time and say squirrel or zebra or aardvark. I mean, some of the names, you know, they are what they are. But this was a daily assignment and God was there hanging out with his son, watching him work. He wasn't helping because sometimes helping makes you weak. 
God was letting Adam become strong. Service makes you strong. And if you're not serving in the body of Christ, you're not going to be as strong. I mean, there's so many people in the body of Christ spiritually who look like they're overweight, overfed, and not being used at all. And then there's the muscular people in the body of Christ who are carrying it and tithing and giving. You don't want to be that person. Let's go to Genesis. In 2, verse 21, the Word of God says, So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And I think this is important because God knew what He was going to give to Adam. He didn't want an amateur's opinion on what he thought he might want or need. Remember, both women and marriage are God's creation, not ours. God took Adam's servant DNA from his rib and created a woman. Now, I often thought about how in every church, women seem to intuitively get the servant DNA. They were created from this DNA from the very beginning. Now, in the next part of verse, it says, and closed up the place of flesh. This is so important. God did not want their marriage to be based on Adam's woundedness or victimness on how hard it is or how painful it is. This cost me so much. He didn't want that attitude at all. So God didn't want Adam to focus on what he lost, but rather what he was gaining in marriage. And that's really, really important. I really encourage couples to address their wounds, their family of origins, their rapes, their abortions, their traumas, uh, their sexual abuse, their physical emotional abuse. Deal with your wounds. And if you haven't dealt with it before marriage, get to it right away. And there's lots of tools in the Healing Times website if you haven't done some of that to get that started. Now then the scripture continues. And he brought her to the man. Now I don't know where or how long God was alone with Eve before God brought her to Adam. But it was enough for her to know God first and his love and his presence. And it's so important that we each have an intimate relationship with the Father. That a woman's not dependent on her husband for a relationship with God. And a man is not dependent on a woman for his relationship with God. Now, can we pray together, read together, worship together, and encourage one another? Yes. But we both need that intimacy of Father. Now, I don't know how this exactly went down, how God brought her to the man, because every day God would bring animals to Adam. It was a normal thing for God to have a herd behind him, right? However, I've, I've heard so many testimonies about how God brought people together and how many marriages have a path of miracles that you can see God leading the way to the service, okay? Now, in a servant marriage, we both have an intimate relationship with the Father. He is our source of love and significance and validation. This means that we pray to the Father, not just talking at God, but allowing Him to speak, read His Word, be around other mature believers, hear what God is saying to your heart. We both have a servant DNA by serving one another and actually serving in the church, serving in your community, serving in some way. We aim to serve others. We aim to serve our spouse. We evaluate our service towards our spouse. Am I a really great servant to you? Am I an average servant to you? Or do I like, I'm not really good at it. Okay, you might want to evaluate that because your father-in-law God might be evaluating that and you really want to get a good job. Now, just a bit ago, I had a guy come up to me in church and he said, uh, you spoke at the men's group and said that, that serving is sexy and that if we're single to start serving. He said, I did exactly that and I met the woman I'm going to marry. I love stories like that. And I want all of us to have a servant heart like this man I met. He was just serving at church. He had a job where he didn't have to work hard. And he just served at church. And he found a woman who was serving at church. And they fell in love. Okay? So whether you're married, you're single, you're divorced, whatever your status is, serving is the DNA of God. Serving is what you want to do. So let's just take a moment and look at your calendar. No, seriously, look at your calendar. How many hours are filled with serving. 
Now, of course, if you have a family and you're serving your family, there's, there's several hours there. If you're newly married, how often are you actually serving your spouse in ways that are tangible? Okay, and that might be affection, that might be praise, that might be creative time together. Okay, that's all valuable. Okay, how many hours are you serving your church? And this is where a lot of marriages, they, they get weak because they're not serving somewhere. How many hours are you serving your community? Would you actually qualify for having the servant DNA? Now, if you don't have the servant DNA, you are probably not going to be an incredible spouse because incredible spouses serve with excellence. They serve with excellence towards God. They serve in excellence toward their spouse. And that's why I want you to have the servant marriage, not just for yourself, but to teach, you know, four, five, six, ten, or hundreds of couples in your church. Because some groups go on, you know, year after year after year, and that's fantastic. But we want you to dig into these principles so that everyone in your church can have a servant heart, a servant attitude, and a servant marriage. Because we serve with excellence the closest person to us. And if we serve excellently there, that service can move towards our family, it can move towards our church, and it can move towards others. And I find that servants who are progressing in their servantness in other areas, they tend to serve better in their marriage. Service makes you like God. It makes you strong. It makes you spiritually well. So find a place to serve, and the first place is that person you might be married to. The Servant Marriage Book is a revelation on God's masterpiece of marriage. To order your copy, call 800-568-9488 or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. Dr. Weiss has been teaching couples how to have life-giving marriages through counseling and conferences. In this book, he will introduce you to practical ways in which you can walk out a servant marriage in your home with your spouse. I want to strongly encourage you to get the servant marriage. Yes, get it for yourself, you and your spouse can really learn a lot of wonderful things, but then start a group. So many couples need what's in here to be able to thrive in their marriage, and you can do that. So get the Servant Marriage. Order your Servant Marriage book and start healing marriages in your family, church, and community today. I want to thank those who support us financially and invite you to do the same. I know you pray for us, but sending your resources really helps us to take this message of healing around the world. Now, I want you to know, I give, I do not take any money from Healing Times Ministry, from the money that you send. I don't do that. You give, I give, and together we can make this message heal people in churches all around the world. So thank you. I hope you're enjoying this conversation on the servant marriage. And I definitely would encourage you to do this in your home, in your small group or Sunday school. Maybe you haven't served in a while and this is God knocking at your heart's door and saying, you could do this. You can read. You can encourage other people. This isn't hard. Do a Sunday school on this. You could do this. At Healing Time, our desire is to give you tools to spread the medicine where you are. I can't come to tens of thousands of churches, but if just some of you start a servant marriage group, you can change the DNA in some marriages, including your own. Now, of course, you can do this at home by yourself and you can become a better servant. But again, as Westerners, we tend to only think about ourselves. And I find if you teach these principles, they tend to get inside of you better. Now, you are the kingdom where you are. Now, let's get back to the movie of God making his final masterpiece called Marriage. So many people honestly believe that woman was the final creation of God, and it is so not biblical. God created man, then he created woman, so that he could create his masterpiece called Marriage. Now, marriage directly reflects the Trinity. In heaven, you have God, the Holy Spirit, and Christ. On earth, you have God, man, and woman. That's the mirror of creation. Now, this servant trinity is the desire that God has to see children grow up, seeing the father serve the mother, seeing the mother ser serve the father, and both of them serving the family. 
And this DNA of service is so important. And God wants to recreate this attitude, this DNA of service. I remember when Hadassah and Jubal were young, we went to a very big church and uh, there was no place for them to serve. And I went to the pastor and said, there's, there's nothing that they can do here. Like we need them to serve so they can figure this out. And so we finally found a place where they could make sandwiches for the, for the people that came uh, who were less advantaged and they would feed them lunch after the service. And so we made sandwiches for years. We'd go in early and the kids would learn that serving the church, even as a child, was important to have the DNA of serving. And I really would strongly encourage this. Now, in verse 23, the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. This is so important that men speak life and identity into everyone, but especially their wives. It's not a bad idea to speak life into your husband as well. To say you're amazing, you're capable, I'm so glad you're mine to cherish, honor, and love. I desire you, I want you, I'm craving you. Let them know that you love them in words, in deeds, in the way they like to be loved. That's fantastic. Now let's continue in verse 24. It says, That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Now this becoming one flesh is the journey of marriage. Now I think that can take decades. We both have to die to becoming one. The servant marriage is an ongoing lifestyle of loving, serving, dying, repeat, Loving, serving, dying, repeat, okay? <laughs> this is so much better to do as a team. I highly recommend that you start some kind of group of the servant marriage and help facilitate this one flesh process because it, it can take a team uh, to help this out. Now, again, if you can read and love couples, you can do this. You know, of course, we need to read the last verse you know, of God's final creation in verse 25, because it's so important. And it says this, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. God's final creation is one of intimacy, one of vulnerability, one of spirituality, emotional connection, sexuality, romance, sensuality that touched without sexual motivation. And enjoying all the aspects of the journey, parenting, finances, social, ministry, church, worship, all of that. See, God wants to take you on a journey. Now, in our culture, I didn't get any training on marriage in high school. Now, in my bachelor's degree, I didn't get any marriage and training, and I got a bachelor's in pastoral ministry. In my master's in divinity, I think there was one course on marriage, in my marriage counseling course, of course, I got a course or two in marriage there. And in my PhD in psychology, there was not a marriage course. So what's interesting to me is how are we supposed to be so good at something that we're not trained in? And this is a dilemma. We think just because we walk down the aisle that, hey, I said I do, I got this. And so often we bring some of the handicaps from our family of origin limitations of our understanding about men and women, uh, limitations on how to serve one another, that marriage is for me. It's about you serving me, not me serving you. It can be a very selfish thing if you have addictions in your marriage that you bring to the table that makes the marriage immature and the other person suffering. See, God wants to set the captives free. And God needs you to do it. God needs hands and feet. And here at Healing Times, we believe that's you. We don't believe it's only the professional staff. We don't believe you hire someone always to fix a problem in the kingdom. Most of the church through church history was done through volunteers like you. Where you go to the pastor and say, listen, I want to do something about marriages. They're falling apart in the kingdom. I want to be a little oasis in my home, my office, or if you give me a classroom, or maybe a Tuesday night or a Thursday night when the church isn't being used, can we do a marriage ministry thing for six or eight, 12 weeks? Pick one of our marriage programs that we have. We have several. And do that. 
and lead that. You don't have to have a perfect marriage. You have to be able to read and talk. If you can do that, the, the tools itself will help guide the conversation so that everyone can be moving towards having a servant DNA, having a servant marriage. And you role model that by just volunteering and say, Lord, send me, I'll go. I don't know much, but I can read and I can talk. And me and my spouse, we can facilitate that. We got a living room. We can fit four or six couples in here. Please, please take some time and serve your fellow Christian marriages and you might actually save some. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's amazing. All you have to do is follow me in a simple prayer. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I want to follow you. I give you my heart. And click that salvation tab on our website, and it's going to give you more information about following Jesus. He loves you so much. We love you, and we want you to have eternal life with Jesus Christ. I want to thank those who support us financially and invite you to do the same. I know you pray for us, but sending your resources really helps us to take this message of healing around the world. Now, I want you to know, I give, I do not take any money from Healing Times Ministry, from the money that you send. I don't do that. You give, I give, and together we can make this message heal people in churches all around the world. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here today and thank you for all those who support us in prayer and resources. We couldn't do this without you. We get excited when we hear emails about people starting groups and, and, and changing people's lives. That's what we're here to do is to help you do your ministry. It's about you and what God's calling you to do. So go to the webpage, find something to do and then go and do it. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned that Men are born male, and God makes them men. How? Through the servant process. We learned also that woman was not the final creation, and that she inherited the DNA of service through Adam's DNA. Okay? And we love that. We learned that marriage is the final creation. It's what God wants people to see this unity and connection and valuing of each other, and to raise families in that in that. that kind of that culture of honor. That's the heart of God. I really hope today's show encourages you to evaluate, am I serving at all? Or am I just watching Christian television? Am I just sitting and being fed and being fed and being fed? Well, if all you're doing is eating and you're not using your servant muscles, you're not getting muscular in the spirit of God, no matter how much you know, no matter how much you listen. Service is what makes you stronger. Service is what transforms you from the average to the servant DNA. So I want to encourage you some way, serve, 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 so that you can get stronger in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He needs you strong. And if you need something to do, go to the website, find a group, lead one, and start serving right where you are. 